So I was saying thank you for your talk that was useful in helping us think about the other stuff beyond the actual mechanics of informatics. And my question was on something you said about getting financial, uh, being able to present your case in a manner that you get financial commitment, following from the point that you cannot, well, if you have a policy that doesn't have a budget, then you haven't made progress. I think in, in summary, that's what I picked from you. It's some sort of cynical thing, but it's kind of real. Exactly. So my question was, do you have an example you could share with us of, of how you were able to straddle that and get to a point where you got real financial commitment on, on something you were pushing for um, from the outcome of a biodiversity, um, what do you say, report or, or um, well, assessment? Yeah. I mean, what, either a, a lesson you learned or a, an actual case study and how you went about that to get the people in yeah. finance and planning to actually commit funds to, to, to this. I will give you three, uh, well, uh, an example composed of, uh, of, a, um, of a meeting that we had among Conabio and Indio and von Humboldt in, in Mexico, Costa Rica and Colombia, and we discussed a number of things, among others, funding issues. But I think that uh, also the Sandy people would be um, capable of giving you some some um, some examples and probably others as well in the group. But I will I will give you the this Latin American set of examples. We had a meeting once to discuss successes and problems and lessons learned and all that. And one of the things that we realized was that each case was different, each case was unique. And in every case, um, you were trying to take up to, to, to um, make the best of the opportunities and chances that were present in that particular situation, time, and country. So in the case of Mexico, it was the fact that a president of Mexico wanted to show off something at the at the Rio uh, conference, the, the the first conference uh, in 1992 that led to to, uh, to the biodiversity convention and other things, uh, and they wanted to show off and wanted to present something. It was a great opportunity to say, okay, you can have a biodiversity com uh, commission, and that is uh, something that will. Uh, look very very well in an international arena and it, it, we had to follow up that because well but that was taking a chance which was a political chance indio in costa rica did a very different thing they built a case around the idea of bioprospecting and the idea of getting to know the biodiversity of costa rica and making it a social thing and they uh, in turn went to many donors, large donors like the European Union and some of the really big uh, NGO um, fund foundations and then they sold um, a very developed idea which was the, the idea of, uh, of uh, bioprospecting in Costa Rica. Um, and it worked well for them for years and years. Uh, for years and years, they had millions of dollars per year in, 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 in contributions from, from the European Union and others. Uh, maybe that, is, that, that, that time is over because uh, economic conditions are very different nowadays. The von Humboldt uh, Institute in Colombia went by, uh, to create uh, an institution like step by step, first doing a large scale consultation with a large number of stakeholders, government agencies, research centers, universities, NGOs in Colombia, and then created a very inclusive board. And on, on that ground, they started developing the institution and all that. And they got some money from the government, some money from the World Bank and so on. So, it, you see, it's, it's very much, uh, uh, each case is unique. Uh, in, uh, I would like to know how it was that Sandy became Sandy from 
wherever they started, but uh, there is also different uh, different experiences in other countries. Each country is different. What you have to do is to be very aware of what are the chances, what are the opportunities, what are the, the things that can relate knowledge and science and, and biodiversity databases and all that to needs, specific needs of the countries or of a donor that wants to do something in a country that often happens too, that suddenly you have a donor, be ready with something to tell the donor uh, and things like that. So I, there is no recipe. It's, it's, it's a matter of being very, uh, very uh, keep the, the eyes open and, 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 and be very aware of, of, of chances and opportunities. The, the, the core business is that in order for an, any country to manage its environment correctly, you need to have knowledge and science organized in a proper way, in ways that can be accessed fast and can be analyzed and shared by others. And that's probably the core thing that, that all of us need, all countries. I hope that's, that's a, a reasonable answer yeah. for your question. Yeah, thanks, Jorge. We have a question from Jean. Question? Come over here. Jean from where? From Benin. Okay. Oh, Jean, can you? Yes. Oh, comment allez-vous, mon ami? Ça va, merci. On peut continuer en français? Pardon? On peut continuer en français? Non, 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 je n'ai pas de français. Ok. Uh, I would like... Please, thanks. I would like to thank you very much for your comprehensive uh, and informative uh, presentation. Um, let's say what I was discussing with um, uh, Tan this morning is that one dimension was lacking. Uh, maybe because that event, that phenomenon does not exist in your, in your country. It is uh, the public awareness building. And uh, this with regard to the corruption going on in developing countries, and especially in my country. Uh, I, uh, what I'm saying is that uh, even if, uh, uh, let's say, we have good knowledge generated, we have also bordering um, institutions taking the right information to decision makers and so on. And uh, uh, if even the good decisions are made and the population uh, awareness is, is not there, is missing, there will still be a, a, a great problem for biodiversity conservation. How can you, uh, from your experience maybe, uh, how can we address that, uh, uh, that uh, let's say, that ph phenomenon, that consideration with regard to public awareness building and uh, corruption? Well, I think that's a, an excellent question, a very good question. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to, to, to answer you from the experience of the countries I am more aware of. Yeah. Uh, there are countries that have that in their culture somehow, uh, probably mostly the, the Anglo-Saxon countries, the northern countries, they are very, the, the public, is interested in nature uh, without you having to do much. It's something that is already there. Yeah. But in other countries, and mine is a perfect example, people don't care about nature, uh, it's the citizens. So how do you create that awareness and that interest yeah. in, 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 in the nature around you, uh, people, I mean, if you are uh, if you are in the country, uh, the people in the country, the farmers, the villagers, they tend to know a lot about uh, the, the environment around them. Yeah. But uh, not not so the people in the cities. The people in the cities just don't care about about nature. So how do you develop that interest, that awareness, that uh, uh, well, that interest? I think it's 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 uh, something that takes time and effort. Um, and you begin when you have in Mexico. The only thing that 
was a coach that was uh, very watching uh, at the scale of the TV frame for how we were in the Europe or in, or in the United States or in Canada, where there are millions of bird watchers which are very well organized and there are guides um, for every single region of the country and associations and clubs and web pages and all that. But still, there is a kernel of interest in people. So in Mexico, Conadio decided to start with that supporting that activity for long term. We thought we knew that that, that was going to be long term. So uh, we, we, we partnered with Cornell University to do a Spanish uh, version of the eBird website. It's called Averaves. It's in Spanish. It's oriented to the Mexican public and it works very well. It's growing exponentially. Yeah. We hired, I mean, Cornadio is paying a full-time person to keep uh, track of that site and supervise it. He's, he's a very experienced bird watcher uh, in Mexico. Uh, we have been partnering with other organizations to teach courses of bird watching in schools, yeah. um, paying to, to, to get guides, field guides for regions, for parks, for, for states, things like that. So if you start building, because it's going to take time, uh, you cannot just uh, create suddenly by, 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 by a government decree, a citizen, a citizens that are interested in nature. It's, it's, it's cultural and you have to, to develop it over a period of time. Yeah. But I am very, very hopeful about this. I think it's really, I really think that it has problems because citizen science has its own problems. Everything has its own problems. But I really think that this is one of the things that is going to change the way we manage uh, our planet. When the bulk of the citizens in the world are aware of what's going on around them, they know more or less what are the birds flying around them, they know at what time to expect the blooming of species of flowers or trees or things like that. And therefore, they are the first to be concerned when things are not working the way they, they were, when some, when some species are missing. When, when, when the, the flowering time is off entirely by, by weeks or months, that is what is going to alarm society. But you have to know before you can start getting alarmed. Otherwise, it's just um, alarms with no information. So, Jean, I think it takes time. And in the, in the case I know, which is in Mexico, uh, we are building it beginning with birds and probably the next group is going to be butterflies because there are already some societies of, of uh, amateurs interested in, in butterflies. So what you do is you start uh, supporting them um, in a reasonable way, not overwhelming them. It's a big mistake. It's always to, to pour money on people to do what you want them to do. You have to work slowly and, 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 and carefully. But um, uh, that, that would be my answer. That, that's something that has to be created over a period of time on many fronts, not just one. And again, I hope uh, uh, this, is, this, is, this makes sense as an answer. Yeah, thanks so much. I do agree. We have to go to try to be, uh, let's say, how do I say it, to, to be optimistic. Thanks so much. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, now a question for you from Alex Asase from, from Ghana. Okay. Hi. Hello, Alex. Yeah, um, thanks for the presentation. Yesterday and today, legislative backing has become an important issue in establishing... Alex, could you speak, could you speak a little bit louder, please? Okay, I will try. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yesterday and today, 
legislative backing for establishment of biodiversity informatic institution has become very central. My question is, do you have some examples about how to go about getting legislative support in establishing such institutions? So, Jorge, just as a little bit of a background for you, uh, Tanya Abramse of Sanbi gave a presentation and pointed out the key role of their NEMBA, what is, what is national, okay, national environmental management legislation and how that essentially gave uh, the, the official role to Sanbi for a lot of what Sanbi does. And so we've been talking quite a bit about how that, that legislative imprimatur uh, can be critical in setting up an institution. So Alex is wondering you know, what your experience is with that, maybe in Mexico and elsewhere, and, and what suggestions you could give us. Well, I think um, that is very important. Um, and again, taking some Latin American examples, in Mexico, uh, there was a presidential decree that created the Biodiversity Agency, and then slowly that Biodiversity Agency had been, has been given tasks in different legislations. So in the, in the environmental law, there are several tasks that Conabio are are supposed to, to fulfill in the in the bio uh, security law the same in, in, in some of the agricultural laws the same so Conavio is now in many in many pieces of legislation and that makes it much more stable than without with just just the, the presidential decree now compare that with what happened in Costa Rica. In Costa Rica, there was no law for a while uh, asking India to do uh, to do whatever. There were understandings, and the government of Costa Rica was very favorable towards India. There was no legislation passed by Congress uh, uh, creating the institution or anything like that. So that meant that INBIO started to weaken and to have to turn itself into some sort of enterprise because the government was not supporting it. That changed very recently uh, and changed in a major way very recently. But uh, um, uh, uh, down may interrupt just to say that I am busy and not to be called. No problem. The phone is calling. No yes. problem, no problem. Yes, sir. 